In this part of the class, we're going to talk about the curl of a vector field. Now, we've already looked at divergence, which is one of the basic operations of vector calculus. And the curl is kind of like a, um, a, a brother or sister operation of the divergence. Now, the divergence measures the spread of a vector field. What curl does, it measures the rotation of a vector field, the tendency of the vector field to rotate, um, loosely speaking. Now here's a couple of examples that we're going to talk uh, about and solve. So I've given a vector field, compute the curl, uh, and in part B we're asked to compute the scalar curl of this um, vector field. And we're asked also to sketch the vector field and discuss the rotation. So let's just work through that systematically and um, see uh, how we go. Now, remember this triangle type um, expression, which we call um, nabla or del. It's just, oh, it's just a symbolic vector that operates on certain vector fields or functions in certain ways. Now, here you can see I'm using sort of this cross product. So the way that that, that, that dvxi plus dvyj, etc., the del operator is acting on f is through this cross product. Now, just so you, we're all on the same page, here I've used sort of an ordered triple here. Let's just write it out in terms of i's, j's, and k's so everybody kind of is comfortable with the notation. Now, the curl is defined by the following. Loosely speaking, it's the cross product of the del operator with your vector field. So um, let's write that down and expand it in terms of a 3 by 3 determinant. Okay, so the components of f will go here, here, and here. So x squared minus y, y plus z, and z squared minus x. Now this is one way that I like to use, expanding this determinant, to compute the curl. You don't always have to do this. You, if you want to, you can use some sort of formula, but it's way too complicated for me to remember, so I can't remember it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is expand along the top row. So I go to my first component, i is in the first column in the first row, so I cover up those and multiply i by the determinant of what's left. Okay, so if I do that, I'll get something like this. Now let's move on to the second part. I've already done this one, let's move on to this one. So J is in this column and this row. So I cover those, multiply J by what's left, the determinant of what's left. But there's a little point to remember, the signs alternate. So it goes positive, negative, the next one will be positive. Okay? So. And lastly, let's move on to the K. K is in this column and this row. So cover those up and multiply K by the determinant of what's left.
Okay. So, remember with two by two determinants, you just work diagonally. But we're not multiplying here. The DDXs, DDYs, etc., are acting on the functions. Okay, so it's that acting on that minus that acting on that. That acting on that minus that acting on that. Okay, so if you expand each of those, let's see what happens. Well, DDY of this, what's that going to be? Zero. Minus DDZ of this, that's going to be one. DDX of this minus DDZ of that. Well, DDX of this is going to be minus one. DDZ of that's going to be zero. DDX of that, zero, minus DDY of that, you're going to get a minus one there. Okay, so I've got minus i plus j plus k. Now, if I write that out as an order triple, minus 1, 1, 1. Okay, now, we don't have it in this case, but usually, well, in many cases, when we take the curl, we get um, uh, function values. We get functions of x, y, and z in each of these components. Here I've just got constants. Okay, so um, at the point 1, 2, 3, this will just be the same, right? So there's no real need to. The curl is just the same. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Now for part B, We've got a vector field in the plane. Compute the scalar curl and sketch the, some vectors associated with G in the plane and discuss the rotation. Okay, so let's have a look at that now. So here G in um, IJK notation is just this. So we would expect all the vectors for our vector field to be horizontal. And if y is positive, they'll point a certain direction. If y is negative, they'll point the opposite direction. And as y increases, the vectors from our vector field will increase in magnitude. OK. Well, before we do that, let's just calculate the curl. Now, from the curl of this ve uh, vector, we can then calculate the scalar curl. It's, it's pretty easy. Okay, so it's going to be a lot less work than last time. So if I expand, say, cover up the i, I'm going to get 0. If I cover up the j, I'm going to get 0. And if I cover up the k, I'm just going to get minus ddy of y. So actually, if I calculate the the curl there, I get minus 1 of k. Again, doesn't depend on x, y, or z, it's just a constant. Now the scalar curl is just this part here. So this is how I'm going to represent the scalar curl. It's just this function here. Okay, so we've calculated the scalar curl. What does, what does it mean? Well, it's negative, and it's constant, it's constant everywhere. So we can link this with the rotation of this vector field. Let me show you what I mean. <laughs> now, let's see if we can draw the vector field associated with G correctly. Okay, so the point is that these vectors are going to point horizontally and hopefully we'll be able to determine the correct way in which they point. 
So when y is small and positive, these are just going to be you know small vectors like this. Okay. Now when it, when y is small and negative, they're going to be the same length but just pointing the other way. Yes. Now if I sort of go up, my vectors are going to get longer and just point in the same direction. Okay, similar down here. Okay, now that, that's a very rough sketch of some of the vectors associated with the vector field. Okay, so let's do a little bit of paddle wheel analysis and drop a paddle wheel in here and see if the paddle wheel will rotate. Okay, so here I've just dropped it in sort of roughly centered at the origin. Have a look at that. W will the paddle wheel rotate? Yes or no? It will. And which direction? Clockwise. Okay, now that's kind of confirmed by the sign of the, cur of the scalar curl. Okay, the scalar curl is negative everywhere. So we would expect our little paddle wheel to rotate about its vertical axis everywhere in, an ant, uh, in a clockwise direction, in a clockwise direction. Okay, so, so observe our paddle wheel rotates about its vertical axis. Not only here, but you can move this around and you're still going to get that rotation. Okay, so it kind of confirmed what we already knew because we calculated the scalar curl, it was negative 1 everywhere. But it's good to actually physically see um, some sort of... Um, uh, Something to confirm that, right? Something to confirm that. Okay. So let's move on to the bigger picture. Hopefully, you have some idea from the previous discussion that the curl measures rotation in a, of, of a vector field, the tendency of the, of the vector field to rotate around a point. If the scalar curl says positive in the plane, then there's an anti-clockwise rotation of, of a paddle wheel about its axis. And similarly, if it, the scalar curl is negative everywhere in the plane, then your paddle wheel spins the other way. Now, a vector field with a zero curl is called an irrotational vector field. So in, in, in the plane, you would sort of drop a paddle wheel in and it, it, would, it would, wouldn't rotate either way about its axis. So here are some questions for you to do. Here's a couple of vector fields. Compute the curl and the scalar curl and then a little bit of sketching. So have a go at those. 